Hey everyone, this is Lori from the Watchman's Final Hour, and the Lord recently put something on my heart. It was actually from March 22nd to the 23rd in 2018, and initially the late evening of March 22nd, I chose to really spend some quiet time with the Lord, and believe it or not, I was talking about tongues, because it's kind of a, a new understanding and acceptance that I developed over the last five years, and the Lord is, I've never really pursued it. And so I was just talking to the Lord specifically about the language, the Hebrew language and how much I liked it. Then I wish he would speak in tongues and through <laughs> that language through me. And then I went ahead and I was just like, Lord, if you could just, just put one word on my heart, a Hebrew word. And all of a sudden within my heart and my, you know, in my spirit, I saw Shavat. And I, and I, with excitement, obviously I'm like, whoa, <laughs> right? And I'm like, Shavat. I said it out loud and I'm thinking, I don't know what it means. You know, I was clueless and and I felt the Lord direct my attention to go to the computer, you know, to get the understanding. So I went to the computer and it's pretty deep. I mean, there's there's quite a bit stated about about this feast, but it's actually a feast, and it's called the Feast of Weeks. And believe it or not, it's it's actually a seven week period of time. And it starts at Pentecost and it goes all the way to Shavat. It ends at Shavat, where it's a three day feast at the end, three day feast, where actually, believe it or not, this year, I don't know if it always hits, if Pentecost always hits in the middle of Shavat, but this year, Shavat is on May um, 19 through, through the 21st. And Pentecost is on the 20th, right there in the middle of this feast. But I looked it up and it, and they actually don't, like I said, Shavat, but they, it looks like certain, um, like with Hebrew, it says, this is what, this is what I found out. It says Shavat in Shepardi and Misrahi Hebrew. Um, it means weeks, um, known as the Feast of Weeks in English and as Pentecost in ancient Greek. It is a Jewish holiday that occurs on the sixth day of the Hebrew month of Sivan. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I don't know. S-I-V-A-N. And then it stated that it may fall between May 14 through June 15. And I thought that was interesting. So I believe, you know, every year is a little bit different, possibly, it looks like. Then I read on to one other passage that stood out to me. And it said, on Passover, the people of Israel were freed from their enslavement to Pharaoh. On Shabbat, they were given the Torah and became a nation committed to serving God. The word Shabbat means weeks. The, and the festival of Shabbat marks the completion of the seven-week counting period between Passover and Shabbat. So if that doesn't stand out to you, I don't know what does. <laughs> but I wanted to make a note that, you know, for this year, obviously, it's May 19th through the 21st. It's a three-day feast, which right in the middle of it is Pentecost on May 20th. And let's move on. So the next morning, when I went to bed that night, that next morning, I woke up having had a dream. So on March 23rd, early in the morning, I had a dream. And there was a phrase, when I first woke up, the phrase that stood out to me was, that first thing I saw was, no, it's rapture season. And so I obviously was very curious at what the Lord had shown me. So I I looked deep within my heart and I asked the Lord, okay, what was the dream? Can help, help me understand it and remember it. And this is what I came to. I specifically remember having asked a question of a man next to me as I was getting up. I'm almost 100% certain that it was like a getting out of bed. So my understanding about getting out of bed is, you know, maybe, you know, moving in, into a different era, moving into a different, you know, state, or, you know, there's something about that, I'm sure, look into it. <laughs> but um, it was like I was getting out of bed, and there was a man that was near the bed, but kind of like to the left of me, and I knew him as Steve. And I thought, you know, later on when I assessed this, I thought, why would Steve be in this dream, you know? And I looked up the name Steve and Steve meant crown. So I thought that was very interesting. But I asked a question of him 
And I believe my question had to do with, you know, what comes next? What are we doing? You know, should we go this way or that way? I, it, whatever it was, it, this is the statement that he gave me. He said, no, it's rapture season. So for some reason, I can't remember what I had asked, but obviously when you have a dream like this and certain things stand out, the, the question really didn't matter. What mattered was the answer. So the key is it's rapture season. And uh, next thing I know, I'm cleaning a shelf. And on this shelf, it, I, I'm or- organizing books that are on the shelf. And it's already clean and neat and I'm hardly having to do anything. I mean, it was already organized pretty well. I go to a second shelf and I have to, I know I have to clean that one too. So I start to try and clean it, but it's very messed up. The books are tattered you know, they're upside down, they're backwards. I'm trying to go, I'm getting the understanding that hurry up, get it done. You know, time is up. We are literally, we have no time left. And so I'm like cramming these books together in a row, but they're upside down still, they're backwards. I can't do it. I realize I can't do it. And um, so I had to stop and I remember stepping, kind of like stepping back and looking at it. Next thing I know, I see a kitten begin to climb over the books. But I forgot to tell you, while I was doing that and working with the books, I got the understanding that cats had done that to the books, had created them to be a mess and tattered. And and if you look up, a lot of times cats can have a negative understanding. They can have one as if it, you know, that's in relation to demonic. So I really believe these two shelves were indicating of the 10 virgins, the, you know, the 10 brides where half of them are not ready and they're, you know, not prepared with their oil. They have nothing. They're and yet the other ones, all they have to do is trim their lamp a little bit and they're off to the feast. <laughs> so, you know, when they're called. So I really believe that had to do with that because it was literally two shelves. One was really neat and organized and hardly needed any adjustment. And the other shelf was really tattered and messed up. And like I said, when the kitten started to crawl up over the books after I had tried to organize them, um, my attention was drawn to the kitten like, oh, I want to hold it. Oh, I want to, you know... And, and I really feel like what God was saying about that is, you know, Satan's going to be so desperate. He's going to put stuff out there that's that's alluring, that's enticing. And we have to be really aware of that. And we have to really pray and stand against the demonic realm and make sure the enemy doesn't, you know, put thoughts in our head that deter us from the truth. We need to stand true to the word of God. We need to claim what we believe and what we know of the word of God. If you feel like you're reading the Bible and suddenly wrong thoughts about the word of God come into your head, you really need to pray against it in the name of the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't know if this is going to sound weird to you guys, but I believe when the beginning of this year started, I felt like the attack of the enemy was much stronger and I was having to pray against thoughts that were coming into my head. I'd be reading the Bible and suddenly this crazy thought about the word of God would come in and I was just like, you know, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, you know, and I just had to really talk to the Lord about where I stood with the helmet of salvation, you know, the breastplate of righteousness. I just, I did whatever I could to fight it. And lately, I think over the last few weeks, I've had freedom. I have not had that happen anymore. So I just, you know, if you're having any weird thoughts like that coming in, rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ and pray, pray God, the precious blood to cover you for just plead the blood of Jesus over, you know, upon you and, and to have that protection against I don't know if it's man-induced. You know, we do know about Project Blue Beam and who knows what else is out there that could be putting thoughts against us. It could also be just stronger demonic. I mean, you know, it is getting more and more dark out there. And I want you guys to know what, what went onto my heart is this. The meaning of it is Shavat, which is the Feast of Weeks that occurs between Passover and Shavat, a seven-week period. It's rapture season, Okay. Between Passover and Shabbat, the groom will come on the scene with his reward. That's why I believe Steve represented the crown, because I believe we, you know, we have crowns waiting us for us. We must use this time wisely to help prepare the bride to meet him. We must battle against the satanic realm because it will come to us even as a kitten, something appealing and alluring. So, and also the understanding was that time is short. Time is very short. But we need to not focus on a day or a specific, you know, two days here, two days there, three days there. We need to say that I I really like what what Robert Breaker recently put out about the rapture theories. I recommend you guys to go take a look at that. I also 
um, have an, another article I'm going to be putting down below in regards to the number 14 because the Lord led me to look up the time frame of where Jesus said, you know, it is enough, the hour has come. And back in 2016, of August and September of 2016, the Lord said three separate things to me. And one of those things he led me to the Word of God, and that was during the Passover, ironically, where after the Passover, all of the, um, you know, three of the disciples went to go pray with Jesus, right? And he came back three, th three th sorry, my tongue twisting there, <laughs> three times to these men that were trying to pray, trying to stay alert. And the third time he said, it is enough, the hour has come. And that's when he was taken to be, to go and um, to die for us. And, you know, feel free to, to you move on anything I'm saying. You know, maybe the Lord's drawing you to do a little more deep research on some of these things, on Shavat, on, you know, just, just a little more depth there. But this is the three things that God said to me, Jesus' hand, Jesus' hand is on the doorknob. It is enough. The hour has come. All that is in the book of Revelation will begin to come to pass. And I just want to leave you guys with that. We know he's coming. We know it's imminent. And we need to rest in that. We need to go out. We need to pray for people, seek God's healing for people. We need to minister to people. And the best way to do it is prayer. There, I, I can't even say that you probably have less than 1%. Who, are, who will say no if you say, "Would you? can I pray for you? So God keeps convicting me that go out there and pray for people. Go pray for people. And and that opens doors unbelievably if we would just move in that way, in that avenue. So I just encourage you all to go out and pray for people, okay? Zealously seek the gifts of the Spirit. That's what Paul said. And go and, and seek the Lord for him to use those gifts through you while you're ministering to people. And, I, and if you don't know the Lord, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Um, that's Romans 10, 9 and 10. And I recommend that if you don't know the Lord and you have a Bible nearby, nearby or you can get one, continue reading from that point on because there's so much more to those verses and the understanding of what is done when you do that, when you confess Jesus as Lord, when you call out to him to save you, to, re to cleanse you of all your sin and to come into your life and to make you a new person. He will do that. And there is freedom, the love that will flood upon you. One thing I've noticed when God moves, when you really say, Lord, I'm ready to step out this way, you know, and you, and you step in a new belief in regards to something the Lord has for you. He is so ready to, to, um, to express himself upon you in a love and a, and a, and a fulfillment and a joy that y you can't help but um, realize that the truth is through Jesus Christ, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So I will leave you with that, guys, and take care. God bless.